Hey guys, this is Steve Losh, and I'm doing another screencast about ClojureCraft, my framework for writing Minecraft bots in Clojure. Uh, this is going to pick up where the other one left off, so if you haven't watched that one, um, you're probably going to be a little lost about this one. So, uh, Since the last screencast, I've added a couple of actions that your bots can do. They can look up and down, they can turn north, south, east, west, and everything in between, uh, they can respawn if they die, and they can also send chat messages. Uh, in the last screencast, they could just receive them, but now they can send them too. So, we're going to use that to create a little bot that will give people items on your server. <clears throat> so, um, it might seem like a little bit of a useless bot, because uh, you could just opt the people and they could slash give themselves some items, but you might not always want to just blindly op everybody, even if you want them to be able to get whatever items they want. So we're going to write a little bot to do it. Um, before I forget, let's do set time to zero so we can see what we're doing. So I've just logged into the server with my default client. I am not an op, so I can't give myself um, some 46, some TNT. I can't do that. So what we're going to do is write a little bot that will handle it for me. And you can see I'm using my regular development environment instead of um, coding right in the REPL. Uh, this is just to make the screencasts go a bit faster. You can use Emacs or IntelliJ or anything you want to work with ClojureCraft. I just prefer MacVim with SlimV, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, but don't worry about the development environment. Okay. So basically what I'm doing, I've created two files uh, inside of the ClojureCraft repo. Eventually I'll put ClojureCraft on Clojars, so you can just use it like a normal library. But for now, uh, it's definitely not backwards compatibly, it's definitely not backwards compatibility conscious yet, so I don't want to put it up yet. Um, so for right now, you can just create a bots directory under the source, and I'm going to create this giver.clj for the giver bot, and the giver bot is going to give people items. And then I've also got this little scratch uh, buffer down here just so I can uh, interact with the REPL easily. So basically what I'm doing uh, in this bot, I'm gonna in my namespace declaration, I'm gonna require a couple of things. I'm gonna require ClojureCraft core as core, actions as actions, and events as events. Uh, I need core to be able to connect to the server. I need actions to be able to send chat messages. And I need events to be able to, vi to bind event handlers like the uh, chat event handler. And I'm also gonna require uh, closure contrib string just because there's some useful functions in there. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, um, let me back up a little bit, and the way people are going to interact with this is by sending uh, chats th that look like this. I want TNT, or I want uh, 64 TNT, right? So we don't want people to have to remember the item codes and have to, you know, alt tab out to Minecraft Wiki to get the item codes for whatever item they want, like they would have to with slash give. So what we're going to do is create this item map, and we're going to say TNT is 46 and levers are 69. Now, obviously, you can, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you can add. Oh, Vim is freaking out. I'm sorry. Um, obviously, you can add whatever you want here. Uh, whatever items you want, but for now we're just going to use those two. Uh, and the next definition here is the regular expression that's going to represent a message that someone's going to send. So in the vanilla Minecraft client, when somebody chats, let me go to the chat window. Hello. Um, it has their username in angle brackets, and then the message comes after that, after a space, right? So we're going to use a little regex to parse that. We're going to say there's a username or any number of word characters inside of angle brackets. And then we're going to say that these messages are I want, right? And then optionally a number of items. So I should be able to say I want 64 TNT, not just I want TNT. And then everything after that is basically going to be just the name of the item that, we, uh, that we're going to give that person, right? So the first actual function we're going to do, uh, this is just my personal style, but I like it, is to make um, a a function that creates these bots, right? So it's going to take a server and a username, so the server that you want to connect to and the username you want to connect as, and it's going to create the bot by running core connect and just passing the server and the username. And then it's going to add the event handler to the bot itself. So um, remember, we're going to be, when you add an event handler, you pass the bot, you pass the type, and you pass a symbol representing the function, the event handling function, right? Um, and then it's just going to return the bot. So that way we can just make bots uh, without having to worry about adding all the event handlers ourselves, right? It's all encapsulated in the individual bot libraries, right? Um, let me check on time real quick. Yeah, the time I had. Oh, okay. Um, so let's talk about 
um, this little helper function here first, uh, give string. So as you probably know, to give someone an item, if you're an op in a multiplayer Minecraft server, you type slash give and then their username and then the number of the item, so the, the code of the item, and then the number of items you want to give them. So slash give Steve Losh 4664 would give me 64 of item number 46, which is TNT, right? So this is just a little helper function that takes the three parameters and creates the, uh, the string. So nothing special there. So now what we're going to do is look at the event handling function. And we're going to call it handle chat. Um, so I haven't typed, or I'm not typing all this out as we go because I have a 15 minute limit on YouTube. Um, I'd love to actually type and, you know, work through the process of creating a bot, but 15 minutes just is not fast enough to do that. So sorry about that, but um, I pre-type everything and I'm just going to try to go through it with you. So anyway, uh, event handlers take, a, take the bot as the first argument, right, as always. And then they also take a number of arguments depending on the event. This is a chat event, so it's going to take a message. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to match the message that we got against the regular expression we defined, right? And so refind is a closure function that takes a regular expression, so foo, and matches it against a string, so foo bar. Oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, the REPL can be a little fiddly sometimes in SlimV, um, just the way it works. Sorry about that. Okay, so you can see that refind uh, takes the regex and returns what it found. But if there's a group in here, so if we add a group, it's going to return a sequence. The first item in the sequence right here is going to be the entire thing that the regex matched. And then the subsequent items in the sequence are going to be each of the groups, the regular expression groups that we had, right? So. Uh, if it doesn't find anything, if we just say nom nom, it's going to return nil, okay? So, in our handle chat, we're going to match the chat message that we got against the regex that we created, defining a chat message. I'm sorry, a give request. And so we're going to say when matches. So if the message that we got was just someone, you know, talking to another friend online, um, it's not going to match this, and so we'll get nil for matches, and this won't fire. Um, which is fine. You can return nil from an event handler. Uh, I know I said that an event handler needs to return a sequence of actions, but um, nil is just fine too. It just won't do anything. You don't need to worry about creating an empty sequence just for that. So, so we only care about things that actually match the request. So what we're going to do is get the item, the username, and the number from matches. Okay? Um, so if we look at these little helper functions, if we look at username first, it just says get matches one. Well, remember when we use refind, we get a sequence. The first item in the sequence, or index zero, because it's zero indexed in Clojure, um, is going to be the entire match, which we don't care about. Um, but the first, or I'm sorry, the second, or index one, is going to be the first group in our regex, so the username. So getting the username from match is pretty simple. We just get element number one. Um, and the same thing goes for get item. Get item gets element number three because remember I, element zero is the entire match as a whole. So if we want the item, we need to go one, two, to the third group in the regex right here, right? So that's pretty simple. Um, actually, we're, we don't need that exclamation mark in there because oh. well, whatever. Uh -huh. Sorry, I've been playing around with enclosure a little bit. Uh, so we have a get item. And now get number is a little different. First of all, the basics are the same. We're going to get element number two, right? The zeroth element is the match as a whole. So first group, second group is the number, right? And that's optional. See the question mark here? That says that the number is optional, so I can just say I want TNT, and it'll give me one. Um, so if that's the case, if this doesn't exist, refind will put a nil in that place. And so um, here I can actually show you that. Um, if we do this. Match against that, and we match against foo, space, and that's it. Sorry about that. We get, oh. oh, that's saying we need one, right. If we say optional, we get foo, and then the group that it matched, just it marks as nil, okay? 
So we use this or statement here to say, well, if get matches two is nil, then we just give the person one, right? One, one, uh, one item. Okay, we're running low on time. Anyway, so we have the get number, get username, get item. And basically all we do, uh, now we have our items. Um, the only other thing we do is we look up the item in the item map, right? So get item is going to return, say, TNT, right, as the item. So we actually need to get the numeric value of that to pass to the Minecraft server. So we look it up in the item map, and we say TNT is 46, and so we store that as the item. And then we return a vector of actions, and in this case there's just one action. It says chat, bot, and then it says form the give string. And remember, give string is just going to form the string that we need to um, that we need to use to give somebody an item. Okay, so let's go down here to the scratch buffer. Let's um, require the bot's namespace, the giver namespace that we said. And we're also going to require closuregraph.core because we want, I want to use this, uh, this Minecraft local mapping so I don't have to type out 127.001 and the username. And we're going to um, create a bot, a giver bot, and we're going to use that make giver method that we did. And it's going to connect to the local server with the username shopkeep. And if we look here, um, this is just a swank window that shows the non-main thread output. Uh, we should see shopkeep joined the game. And it's still parsing chunks, so it's going to take a while. Uh, while I wait, I'm going to set the time to zero so that we can see what we're doing. Okay. Um, so, still parsing the chunks. And what we're going to do, basically, everything should be working now. I'm just going to be able to say, I want TNT. And it's still parsing chunks, like I said, so it's going to take a second for it to get to that packet. Um, once it's done parsing the chunks, everything will be much more responsive. But for now, we're running low on screencast time, so I'm just going to fire it off now and wait for it to happen. Still parsing chunks. Shopkeep, the person, should be around here somewhere. I don't see them, but... They could be in a hole somewhere that I don't see, so. Ah, oh, there we are. There's Shopkeep. Okay. There's a bot. We're still waiting. Um, for the person. Oh, right. Um, I'm going to need to op our bot. So, op Shopkeep. Uh, you can see that Shopkeep actually did try to give me the TNT there, but um, they weren't in op, so it didn't work. So I'm going to do it again. I want TNT. And now Shopkeep, you can see, gave me the TNT. So I didn't need to remember the item code or anything. And now I can say I want 63 TNT. And now we have 63 TNT. Or 64, rather, because we got Y and 1. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually do another screencast because I'm running up against the 15 minute limit. That one will be a little shorter. It's just going to talk about how we can extend the spot to be even a little bit more useful. Um, I'm going to show you how to... Normally you can't say, you know, give Steve Losh uh, 46 and say, you know, 65. It'll just cap it at 64. Um, but I'm going to show you how we can write a bot that will do that for us so we don't need to worry about that and just keep typing give over and over and over again. Um, so. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to post the other screencast as soon as, as soon after this one as I can. Thanks, guys.